you'll no doubt be aware that there is a massive, glaring, serious issue in British political life that mainstream politics has decided to either ignore or to bat away with insults of racism and hatred. If they do address it, such as Boris Johnson is doing now, uh, he'll address it with those magical words, Australian style points system, completely ignoring the fact that Australia is struggling dreadfully with mass immigration, just as the rest of the Western world is. And speaking of which, it's the Western world that is expected to take this global migration shift, unlike other parts of the world. And people who are native to here are being told to like it or lump it. Our countries have now changed and we must adapt and adjust and alter our culture to accommodate, to accept cultural practices and norms that we, the people, don't actually accept. We now live in multiculturalism and that in itself is an admission of the vast differences in culture that we now have living within our shores and which are not getting along as smoothly as the politicians would have you believe. So today I'm going to take you through our the For Britain immigration policy. It's absolutely crucial policy and this is a policy for the post-Brexit world because unlike most who talk about immigration, including the pro-Brexit parties who occasionally talk about immigration. Uh, they only do so with reference to the EU. But there's, there's a, it's not about the, this isn't actually about the EU. Um, EU immigration has been big, yes, but it's immigration from outside the EU, which is even bigger. And that immigration has been controlled by the British government for decades. They'd like to blame it on the EU and like to say we'll take back control when we leave Brussels. But you've already had control over non-EU immigration all this time and it's that that has been both higher than EU immigration and which has contributed mostly to the complete transformation of British society. So don't believe the lies you are being told that when we get out of the EU everything will be fine immigration wise. It won't. We still have this enormous problem of third world immigration completely culturally incompatible with Western society. That's the main problem and that's the problem that Brexit isn't going to fix and that's the problem that even pro-Brexit parties don't address when they talk about immigration. So let's move on. I will read, as in my previous video about Islam, I will read the policy directly uh, and then uh, make some, some comments on it. So to start, immigration to the United Kingdom is too high and must be dramatically reduced. According to the Office for National Statistics, 273,000 additional people lived in the UK in the year end in June 2018. It reports that during that year, 625 thousand people moved to the UK while 351,000 left. 625,000 people moved to the UK in a year. That is a shockingly high number. It's a small island. And what I'd like to say to the unlimited immigration people is when do you stop? It's particularly pertinent for the Greens who want to protect both green spaces and have unlimited immigration. But when do we stop? Uh, when the entire of, of Great Britain is concreted over uh, and we're all living on top of each other? Well, when do, when, where's the stopping point? Where is it? Someone has gonna have to give a number, but I can tell you from my perspective, 625,000 people in a year is far, far too high. Immigration affects all aspects of our lives and yet most politicians refuse to address this. Now I've said many times that when I've taken part in hostings for example, when I'm allowed to take part in hostings, I've said, I've mentioned immigration when we talk about the NHS or school places or housing and I've been met with across the board, Labour, Tory, Green, Lib Dem, you name it, across the board, racism. 
this is racist. You can't talk about that. That's racist. It's absurd. It's infantile. And it's a way of batting away the issue and stopping us talking about it. And the reason mainstream politics doesn't want to talk about this issue is because no mainstream politics caused the problems. Labour and Tory don't want to admit the problems behind mass immigration because they caused it and they're still advocating for more and more of it. So if you don't want to be called a racist by them, you have to go along with it. I refuse to. Common sense should reveal to us that an extra 273,000 people in a single year means 273,000 extra people in need of housing, healthcare, jobs and school places. Um, again, com this, is, this is common sense. Where are we going to get all these houses from? Where are we going to get the NHS places from? Uh, and, and the left will tell you that the problem isn't uh, too many people, that, that, that the demand is too high. It's that the provision is too low. And again, I want to ask, where does it stop? How are we? How, when are we going? How much are we going to invest in the NHS, for example, to take the whole world? And it could be the whole world because no one puts a number on it. How much investment in the NHS are we going to need to give health care to unlimited numbers of people? Where does this madness actually stop? And as for the housing market, we're told there's a housing crisis, again, without any mention of demand for housing. How can we trust our country to be governed by people who won't address rising demand for housing when discussing housing? This is crazy. And this demand for housing has driven housing costs through the roof. That has driven the welfare bill through the roof because the welfare bill is paying a lot of people's increasing, increasing rents. This is madness. It is spiralling out of all control. Whilst we acknowledge and appreciate the many hard-working legal immigrants in Britain and their contribution to our country, and I do mean that, For Britain recognises that the British economy has become too reliant on foreign workers and that this has had a major impact on the employment prospects of Britons. This, once again, is simple common sense. If you open up the jobs market to unlimited people from outside of the country, then what are you doing to the job prospects of the people already inside the country? It's inevitable that wages are going to either go down or stagnate, that conditions will reduce, and that the working class will be pushed backwards. The standard of living will go down. Uh, and what's more important, you must put your own people first. The British government is elected not to protect the people from other countries, but to protect the people from this country. People in other countries have their own governments to put their interests first. The British government must put British people's interests first. And that means that if there is too high a supply of workers in any given industry, you must cut it back in order to give your own people a chance at a decent wage and a decent standard of living. For example, it was reported in 2014 that 80,000 students per year struggle to find nursing places in the NHS, despite the NHS hiring thousands from abroad each year. Now, the Tory migration policy, uh, which talks about NHS visas, which will make it easier for people to come here to work for the NHS, that's Tory policy, while 80,000 British students can't get nursing places in the NHS every year. See the problem here. We're abandoning our own people while filling the NHS with people from other countries, perhaps with broken English, perhaps with huge cultural gaps that makes it difficult for patients to relate to the doctors and the nurses in this highly vulnerable position that they are in, in, in being in hospital, for example. Uh, once again, once again, if there's any shortfall in the NHS for nurses, we're not filling it by training young Britons. We're filling it with immigration. That's what the Tories are going to do. And, you know, we all know what Labour is going to do in immigration. But this is crazy. And it is once again failing in that fundamental, crucial responsibility to put the British people 
first. For Britain believes we must prioritise investment in training and access to employment for young British citizens in the best interests of British society tomorrow and the British economy today. So that's the economic, uh, I guess, discussion of, of immigration. And you will be told that immigrants bring greater economic prospects. Well, they also bring greater demand on services. They also increase prices of housing. Unlimited numbers is an economic catastrophe uh, and you will not be told this. You'll be told upsides only. Uh, there's a gap in, in, in the employment market, for example. Well, if there is, let's get it filled by unemployed or, 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 or young Britons who are struggling to find work. But there is another aspect to immigration, which you definitely won't hear about. All you will hear is how wonderful multiculturalism is uh, and that it has no downside whatsoever. And if you have objections to multiculturalism, you will, of course, I'm bored saying it, but you will, of course, be a racist to continue with our policy. Furthermore, much immigration comes from societies that are fundamentally at odds culturally and in terms of religion with British culture and law. That is a matter of fact. Uh, in some societies, for example, child marriage is, is normal. Parents marrying off their young daughters, for example, is normal. Uh, this we consider to be a heinous crime. Uh, so we cannot, oil and water won't mix. Our morals are completely different and this isn't spoken about either. This has led to a fracturing of British society, yes it has, and vastly increased social division. Now politicians, uh, more in common, uh, let's unite. We are united. No, we are not united. And yes, we have simple human things in common. We all eat, we all sleep, we all feel fear, we all feel joy. Um, but that doesn't mean we're the same. These are fundamental aspects of, of much of animal life. It doesn't mean that we are easily going to live together because what we have in common is, 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 is simple, uh, basic biological things. But what we have religiously and culturally in common, there isn't a great deal. And the differences are not minor differences. The differences are enormous and they are fracturing this country and changing it beyond all recognition. For example, it was revealed in 2017 that a staggering 50,000 people living in the city of Birmingham are unable to speak English. Does that sound like a united society to you? One, England's second city, Birmingham, 50,000 people in it can't speak English. That's not a cohesive society. That is not a society that is rubbing along nicely together. That's a society that can't even speak to each other. And that's 50,000 people who can't get by in British society. How are they living? How are they working? We know that. We know they're not overwhelmingly working. I don't see how someone who doesn't speak English can successfully work and integrate into this society. Um, that needs to be dealt with. 50,000 people. If someone, if anyone goes to a parliamentary hostings uh, coming up to the general election, please do ask what you think of 50,000 people in Birmingham who can't speak English. Is that the united cohesive society you were selling us over the last decade? Of course it isn't. The native English population of Birmingham, England's second city, are due to become a minority in the coming years. The political and media class described this displacement of the native British of the native British as diversity. Well, diverse it may be, uh, but diversity and cohesion and unity are actually polar opposites. And yet, the politicians have been telling us for years that we are both diverse and united. It's an extraordinary thing. So here's the list. Here's the list of policy proposals. For Britain will freeze immigration to the UK for a period of five years. This will not affect travel for business or leisure and temporary work visas may be issued during this time in the interests of the economy. Now, in order to not make this video too long, below I'm going to link to an article in which I will write 
exactly what we mean by a freeze on immigration for five years. It means, for example, no more indefinite leave to remain for five years. No more British uh, passports handed out for five years. Nobody moving here to permanently settle for five years. As I say, read the article. I will go into this in much more detail. Next point, ensure that the need for foreign workers is, re is reduced in the near future by investing in effective training for young Britons. That part is absolutely crucial. We are hiring people from abroad while our own people can't get jobs. This is not, not acceptable. Introduce a points-based migration system at the end of these five years based upon need and in the interests of British citizens. Now, uh, I did say that other politicians will come out with this Australia-style point system. A point system is a very effective way of having, of organising inward migration. But to call it, to, to leave it all on Australia-style point system is to ignore various factors. One is to ignore the cultural uh, aspects I've just been talking about and make it all about economics. It isn't about economics. Uh, but also, uh, for example, with the Tory policy, they'll tell you points-based, but they won't tell you how many they're letting in under that points-based system. But in our points-based system, we'll include those seeking to live in the UK will be of good character and economically self-sufficient, will re respect British culture and make an effort to integrate. They will obey UK laws and agree to adhere to the democratic order. Those who will not integrate or who will not respect British laws and norms will not be permitted to live in the UK and will not be granted British citizenship. Perfectly, perfectly clear. The points-based system, yes, is to gain entry to the country, but it doesn't stop there. You also have to, while you live here, make an effort to integrate. That means, for example, learning to speak English. If you don't speak, actually, you need to speak English before you come here. Uh, but if you people who are here need to learn to speak English uh, or we review this. If you're here uh, on, a, on a, a working visa, for whatever visa you happen to be here, for example, family, and you're not speaking English, we'll have to review your living here. It's as simple as that. We also have to, you know, as well as inward immigration, we have to look at who's already here. And if people are not making any effort to integrate, we have to ask whether they are in the be whether their presence here benefits the UK or doesn't. Uh, if it doesn't, those people are well be asked to leave. We will make clear and legislate that all British citizens are equal. Now, this is again, we, we, this party is called all sorts of bigots and racists and all the rest of it. Um, all British citizens are equal. The point, the major point of this is that if you're not a British citizen, you don't have the same rights in Britain as a British citizen does. Uh, now, again, you'll, you, you get the usual hysterical nonsense on this. There's a crucial point to be made here, and that is that the human rights, the, the human rights uh, culture, I guess, legally and socially, allows people, an immigrant who's just arrived from Sierra Leone, gives them the same rights as a British citizen. That's absurd. That means that being a British citizen doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't give you any benefits. If someone from Sierra Leone has the same rights you have, then what's the point in being a British citizen? We will not give the same rights to people from other countries as British citizens enjoy. And that the crucial primary reason for that is because your fundamental right as a British citizen is the right to live in Britain. No one has the right to live in Britain. It's a privilege. If you come here, you will integrate, you will make the most of it, you will be well behaved, you will be of good character, you will respect majority culture. That doesn't mean you have to give up all your own traditions, provided they are within British law, but you will respect British culture and make an effort to become a part of it. If you don't do that, you will not be allowed to stay here. And if you actively speak out against British culture and actively seek to destroy it, you will be removed. Use the resources currently employed in facilitating inward migration to investigate current 
illegal immigration. Now, vast resources go in to facilitating inward migration to this country. Stop it. Let's reroute those resources for looking at, finding, uh, reviewing those who are already here, and particularly illegal immigrants. We must stop illegal immigration because it is a license. If every time a politician, a mainstream politician, uh, gives out an amnesty for or uh, advocates for giving out an amnesty for illegal immigration, you're telling the world to come here. You're giving them license. All you have to do to stay in Britain is get to Britain. Completely irresponsible for mainstream politicians, but we're used to that now. Deport those found to be living in the UK unlawfully. Exceptions may be made on humanitarian grounds. Now, the deportation of people here illegally is as important a message to send to the world as the irresponsible one that politicians send now by advocating for, for uh, amnesty. Uh, we must tell the world that if you come to the UK illegally, you will not be able to stay. That's crucial, because if we don't do that, they'll keep coming. It's simple, common sense stuff, I know. Ensure that appeals against deportation are at private and not public expense and are conducted from the appellant's home country. So if you are expelled from the UK for being here illegally or for uh, causing trouble or for committing a crime and you want to appeal that, you can do so from your own country and you can do so at your own expense. British taxpayers are paying for often convicted criminals to appeal their case, their deportation. If someone, is, for example, is convicted of a serious crime and deported, they're staying in the UK using British taxpayers' money to appeal that deportation. Absolutely scandalous. It should not be allowed. If they can appeal, they can appeal on their own penny and from their own country. The British taxpayer is rather overburdened enough uh, without having to pay legal fees for convicted foreign criminals. It's a scandal. Ensure that asylum is rare, of proven necessity and temporary. Britain is a compassionate country willing to help those in need, but any asylum must be based upon immediate threat, that is, poverty does not constitute grounds for asylum, and the understanding that it is temporary. Now, the way asylum seems to work now is that people come here and then stay here for life, on benefits even. Absolutely not. Asylum is temporary. It has always been a temporary measure. And when the country that the person is fleeing from becomes stabilised again, they will return to that country. Uh, we are not, uh, it, it, it's, it's not an open, it's not a, we're not a basket case for the world. We cannot take in every trouble from around the world and we certainly cannot take in everyone struggling with poverty, which is what our politicians are trying to do. They're trying to make out that poverty is grounds for asylum. It is not. Asylum laws are quite clear and it is temporary and we will only take a small amount of people in immediate danger who will return upon the end of that danger. That's the beginning and end of it. It is not a license to claim poverty and come here and live off the British taxpayer for life. It has to end. Reassess current asylum seekers in the UK and deport those involved in violent crime. Now, uh, this is a serious one. And this is one that I am absolutely clear on. Even if, and let me make this as clear as I possibly can, even if you come to the UK because your life is in danger, you are not allowed to inflict criminal behaviour on British society. If you are, even if you are a genuine asylum seeker and you attack a British person in the street, if you rape a British woman or child, you will be thrown out of this country, danger to your life or not. Your, our generosity in giving people asylum, for them to turn around and to rape or abuse or mug or attack a British person in the street or to involve themselves in serious organised crime, that's how they thank us? Absolutely not. 
So once again, to be clear, I'm unconcerned about the danger you face. If you come to this country and attack British people in the street, you will be thrown out of this country, irrespective of the threat you face in your own country. I do hope that's sufficiently clarified. Finally, triple the size of the UK border force to ensure that immigration laws are applied. Once again, it is a free-for-all at present, a free-for-all. The law may as well mean nothing at all. And that's across the board. People are just breaking the laws and just getting away with it willy-nilly. Uh, absolutely pointless the law becomes in that in that regard. Why? Sh what's the point? What's the point of the law if it's not applied? And immigration law is particularly uh, pertinent when it comes to that particular scandal. Uh, and Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, advocating for amnesty for illegal immigrants, is telling the world that our immigration laws are pointless and meaningless and you, you can just ignore them. That, from a Prime Minister, is well quite shocking, actually. Um, because it, it, it tells you, it tells you a hell of a lot. It tells you that that Prime Minister, A, doesn't respect the law, B, is happy to send out dangerous messages to the world, and C, doesn't really give a damn about the impact those messages have on, guess who, the British people. Immigration will transform this country. It has already transformed this and other European countries beyond all recognition. People are uncomfortable with it. High percentages say over and over again that they don't want high levels of immigration that we've seen. But they're ignored. They're ignored and ignored again. Uh, they'll be battered away with sound bites about Australia st style this um, or economic that. And they're just not listened to. The fear at the transformation of their towns and villages is met with accusations of bigotry. It has to stop. This is a crucial issue. This is a key issue. And if we want Britain to even remotely resemble Britain in 20, 30 years time, we have got to stop these, this mass immigration and bring these numbers down. And we have to do it now. We have to be tough. We have to be robust. We have to stick to our guns. We have to mean it. It's not good enough to make sound bites at election time. We have to mean it. And I know that this upcoming general election is quite a different one. It's very Brexit based. But post Brexit, this has to be the issue. And I've often heard people say we were never asked about immigration. Uh, and as, as much as I don't really like to say this and, and people won't want to hear it. But each time you go out and vote Labour and Tory, you are in, in one respect, giving your consent, because they are both mass migration parties uh, and they've both proven that over and over again. So the way to withdraw your consent for mass immigration is to stop voting Labour and Tory and to really change politics, not for a single issue, but for good. Join for Britain, the party that will stop mass immigration and will keep Britain British.